Okay, so hi. Today we want to take a look at op-amps. So what is an op-amp? An op-amp is simply a device that amplifies something. It takes a very small input and gives you a very large output. And the measure of how much that output is, based on the input, is called gain. Gain measures the ratio of output and input. So what does it look like? This is a simple block diagram that you will see in many questions. This diagram shows the actual the actual terminals of the input of the up amp. So the up amp has a few main things. It has supply, it has a positive supply and negative supply. This represents the maximum the output could ever be. Okay? So the maximum the output can ever be is plus Vs or the minimum is minus Vs. Okay? The, it has two inputs. So the input is either non-inverting. Non-inverting inputs means that a positive will give you back a positive. It's not inverted. Inverting now means a positive will give you a negative. For example, if you have a negative 6 volts going into the input, then you might have a change in sign. Positive 12 or something coming out. Okay? That's what inverted means. Any input going into here is going to be inverted. The sign is going to change. Okay? So the, the up amp has those, those two main terminals, the non-inverting and the inverting. The output is measured here. This is a zero rail. It simply represents a nice reference point between here and here to find the potential difference. Okay? So an up amp, for an up amp to work, the up amp has to have a very high gain. The main concept behind the up amp is that it takes a very, very small value and give you a very large, very, very large value. So a nice thing to look at might be, okay, so what are the assumptions of an up amp? Well, the assumptions of an up amp are very, very simple. An up amp, we want an up amp to have a very large gain. So we want the gain to be, what's the largest value we can have? We want the gain to be infinity, right? So ideally, we want it to be infinity, right? So... For us to have a very, very, very high gain, then we must take a very, very small input, very, very small input, and give us a very large output. So, what's the smallest we can get? Well, basically, we want the input to be almost zero, and we want the output to be infinity, right? How do we get a very, very small or zero input here? Well, if I make the resistance in here very, very high, right? If I make the resistance here very high, like infinity, then little or no current will flow in there, so it'll be little, so it'll be a zero input. And if I want to make everything come out, then I can make the resistance or the or something called the impedance very very small. Okay, so the three assumptions of the up amp are. So as I said, we looked at the up amp, the up amp has three assumptions. The assumptions that the gain is infinity, right? A very, very large gain. Input is, input is very, very, very small. Output is very, very large. So for us to get infinity here, this must be infinity, this must be zero. So to get, to get zero going in here, we must have very high impedance or resistance. So the resistance is infinity and the resistance output is zero. So these are the three basic assumptions of the upper. And the up amp has a maximum V out of plus or minus Vs. Just think about it. There is no way for us to have an output that's larger than supply. Okay? So, what happens now? Let's say we have a numerical value where the input gives us a, a larger value than this. Then, the up amp is set to undergo saturation. So, in th this case, the maximum V out here is plus or minus 15 could be plus or minus 15 volts, which is an example. So for example, if my V out turns out to be 16, it means that this up amp cannot operate. And this up amp is really operating now in saturation. Saturation simply means that there is no value of 16, it just goes to the highest, which is 15. Okay? Similarly, if I had 9 minus 16 volts, it will be in saturation again, and the output will be negative 15 okay so this means that for the up amp to function properly there must be a maximum input so 
looking at a simple formula there, we can see that maximum input, right? If I rearrange, maximum input is maximum sub maximum output, which is plus or minus V supply over the open loop gain. Open loop gain means that the gain is open. Here is open loop. Closed loop means that there's a feedback, and that's what we talk about a little later on. So here we have the upper, and here now we have a graph representing the upper. So let's say we have an upper that takes the input and gives you a positive input, gives you a positive output. So that would be a what? Something going very good, but to non inverted. A positive will give you a positive, a negative will give you a negative. Okay? This, this is how the graph will look. The graph will, will have this shape and then it has a Z like, a Z -like structure. What this means is that any value beyond this value, this is the maximum being, the value could only be positive 15 or negative 15. So any value outside here is where you have the up and operating in, very good, saturation. Similarly here, it will be in saturation. Okay? So that's the reason why the graph begins to plateau off. Because any input larger than this value gives you an output that is more than 15, which is not accepted. And that is the, that is where the up amp undergoes saturation. This here is a basic summary of what the up amp is really about. So the up amp has two terminals, non-inverting, inverting, it gives you an output, has a supply, positive V supply, negative V supply. This output can never be more than the supply. How do you measure how much the output is compared to the input is called gain. Gain represents the ratio of output and input, right? And uh, the maximum input that will allow to go to saturation. What is saturation? Saturation is when the output is more than the supply or less than the supply. So it's more than positiveness or more than negativeness, okay? And the shape of a graph is generally like this for the up amp. And these are the assumptions. We want an ideally, we want an up amp that is that gives us a gain of infinity. We want our uh, input as almost zero. So to achieve that, we must have a resistance or an impedance here of infinity. Also, the output must be very large or infinity. And to achieve that, the resistance here is going to happen to zero. Okay? So here, we have a simple introduction to what our pump is about.